What's up guys and gals, my name is Splattercat, and today at the Nerd Castle, I think we're finally gonna do this quest right over here. I believe it should be on Boyar Mariga's land, so let's see if he'll give us the quest. Although it could be Malaysia too, I don't know. It says, do I know you? I am Mad Dog McGriddle. Present forth your treasure. I am Boyar Mariga, a vassal of Kingdom of Vagirs and the Lord of Rivacheg. <laughs> Fancy this, a maiden all equipped for war. Well, it's a strange sight, but in your case, I can imagine that it might grow on me. Hey now, pal. I grow on people like a fine, fine fungus. Let's see here. If you're disturbed by the sight of me, I'd be pleased to put out your eyes. Ooh, wow, we can like threaten people and stuff. Do you have any tasks? He says, yes, there's a group of sea raiders that have a hideout. And that's exactly what we were looking for. So we're going to accept that quest. I'm not going to read all the text because the text tends to repeat a lot. Let's arrange our troops in a fashion that benefits our success here in the future. Because, as I said in a previous episode, when you go into, like, a close combat situation where it only allows you to bring, like, four guys, it picks from the top of the list first. So you tend to want your Huskarls and other people up there. And you'll see that that's turned blue, which means it's ready to be raided. So let's see if we can get in there and fight with it. There's a 21 group of Sea Raiders right there. We'll get them later. We'll come back for you. Shh. We'll get you later. Let's go ahead and handle this. I'm not going to say before. Actually, I am going to say beforehand, but we're not going to save scum. If I fail this, I fail it. That's how we're going to live. Let's attack these bandits, and it looks like, ooh, it brought a recruit with us. That sucks. I'm going to put them all on follow mode. That's how I would recommend it as well. That that recruit might as well just kiss his ass goodbye. He is not going to make it. I hope he polished that thing because it's going to be all up on his lips. Let's see here. How many are going to be on our left? You want to get your shield up because they are going to start firing on me pretty soon. None on the left. It looks like we've only got like three over there on the right. This is kind of a weird starting configuration, but I will take it. It's better than getting steamrolled at the beginning. So off we go with a almost at a crimson moon, but that's not, I know my colors. I went into the second grade. I know my colors. I can handle this. That is a silver moon or maybe like a whitish gray moon. I think I'm going to go for the two over here because those are going to be obscured by boxes. Hey, hey. That's not friendly. I just came to stop by and say hi, pal. I need to throw stuff at me. Soldier, save me! I'm inept. I can't fight on my own. Oh, and clubbed him in the back of the head. Just some nasty donkey punch action right there. And I'm just going to hack that guy like crazy. Although, I assume that a lot of the hacking that goes on in life is like crazy. I mean, only crazy people hack other people. I suppose you can hack like crazy if you're like out of your mind and you have like tuberculosis too. And see, there went the recruit. I told you that dude was toast. I knew for a fact there was no way he was walking out of this one. You, you are mine. I shall stab you. Provided my soldiers don't steal all the glory. Come on, man. Ow. We really don't want to die during the course of this mission. If we do, we fail it automatically. So I'm actually going to put everybody on charge mode so that they can distract some of these foes. Our shield is very nearly broken, which is disappointing to say the least. And we have almost no health left. Now the quality of their troops, it's going to diminish. Actually, let me grab another shield. They're laying all over the place. You can do this if you didn't know. You can just like pick up other people's equipment and it'll be mighty fine. You'll drop yours and grab the other one. Ooh, I thought that there's like, there's a pixelated line on my screen. I thought it was an arrow coming towards me. I was like, no, please don't arrow me. We're so close. You better win that fight, man. I will never let you hear the end of it if you die. Okay, we have succeeded in our quest. Our mighty quest. With the retreat cut off, the Sea Raiders fall one by one to your determined attack. Their hideout and ill-gotten gains are now yours. Oh yeah, I forgot we got treasure. I am always down for some treasure. Oh, we got some butter, some boire. I think that's how it's pronounced anyways. I don't know French. I'm just making up words at this point. I think I saw that in an article one time. Like, I was trying to learn how to cook something. And it had a French chef on there, and like, his motto was butter, butter, butter. And I think the word was the one that I just said. But I could be completely wrong. I should have just said like horse scrotum in French. I don't know. And if I did, I apologize. I didn't mean to. Let's convert them into some footmen's. Replace the warrior that got knocked the hell out. And then we got to go find Mariga here, and we're going to get our just due. 
We didn't level up. We still got like 600 XP to go, but you'll see what I mean. When we turn this quest in, we are about to get rewarded like kings. We're about to make some money. We're about to get some experience. It is about to be a wonderful, wonderful day in the realm of Mad Dog McGrittle. See in there? Oh, he is. We got to go to the castle. Let's go hang out at his crib. There's us looking mighty strapping. Got forearms like a UFC cage fighter. But we're still feminine. We're still feminine. We can carry it on out. We like to think of ourselves sort of like softball players. We're well muscled, but we can, we can still be feminine. Boyar Mariga. Splendid work. And there it is. We got 3,000 experience, which leveled us up twice. We got some renown, 1,500 silver. Very, very cool. And so this is a quest we're going to come back to, and we're going to farm it every now and again. The Sea Raiders tend to respawn pretty quickly. So you can come back all the time to do that quest over and over and over again to level while you're getting your stuff done. We also need to drop off some of our equipment here, but let me level up first. Ooh, wrong thing. There we go. Kalakta. That's what I want. So agility is now at 12. I'm going to put strength up to 12 as well so that we can get four on all the baseline stats. With two skill points, I'm going to go riding four. And I'm going to go Weapon Master four because that's going to let us swing our weapons a little bit quicker. I may actually take agility up to 15. So that I can get this up to the 200s, I think, which is at the at that point you swing pretty much faster than just about everybody else. I'm going to save the weapon points. And let's be off. Actually, no, we had to sell. We had to sell. I'm getting ahead of myself again. And I really don't want to do that. I want to move slowly as though I was covered in molasses. But if I was covered in molasses, I feel like I would just spend way too much time like dipping crackers in myself. Let's see here. Well, with the exception of certain regions, I wouldn't dip a cracker in certain regions of my body, regardless of how much molasses they had in them. Let's sell as much of this crap as we can. 304. I bet I can get a... I want a Huskarl's shield. I know they're going to be around here somewhere. Huskarl's shields are like giant shields that cover your entire body. They're like that big. They're enormous. They're complete and total overcompensation shields. And you cannot be hit like whatsoever from behind them. I'm happy with our food supply. 542 silver there. Let's go to the horse merchant. They don't have any chargers, unfortunately. So we're going to have to walk away from that one. Although I think I only leveled my riding up to three. Did I? No, I went up to four. It's all right. Let's go see if we can find a place with an armored horse. An armored horse is going to help us out a lot. At this point, there's not going to be a whole lot to hunt up here. So I may actually move south and start hunting some tundra bandits until that respawns. We'll come back and check on it every now and again. And you'll forgive me. The camera auto locks to my character and I forgot to turn it. I think you can turn it off with like mountain blade tweaks, which is a tweaking tool. But for now, there's not going to be a whole lot of tweaking going on. We are not going to be smoking meth up in this party. We are going to leave the tweak alone. Let's see here. Well, I'm not going to be able to see anything at night. Let's go to Slezga. <laughs> I don't even know how to say that town's name. Slezga. <laughs> it's got a K in it. And it's got Z's and K's and H's, at which point I just lose all hope of passing the grammar test or the phonics test. Hooked on phonics is not working for me right now. Let's see here. Did the whole thing! Still can't read worth shit! I can't do it! Let's get up in here and... Oh, those, oh, I thought those were bandits, but they're just peasants. We can't raid any peasants right now. I'm gonna do my obligatory look around for... General Questeries in here. Deshavi, nobody likes her. Deshavi is an okay character, but... Same with Marneed. I think Marneed, he's like a bleeding heart or something. We really don't want... Bleeding hearts in our parties because they won't allow us to raid things and raiding is a super great way to make a ton of money If you're never going to be in that area that you're raiding anyways, you might as well do it and just make loads and loads of cash Kind of front stock yourself. You can make probably 20 30,000 silver During the course of a war just raiding cities if you can get there first, but it's not gonna make you any friends It's definitely gonna make you some enemies. There's in a tournament right now not gonna do the tournament because I don't like the Kurgit, I'm sorry, not the Kurgit ones, the Vigir's ones are kind of like mixed infantry horseman battles, which are weird, and I don't enjoy them. Let's check the tavern for any notable recruitables. Doesn't look like there are any. We'll go to the marketplace, and... God, nobody has any horses for me. Somebody has hidden all the horses. They're like, look out, Mad Dog McGriddle's coming. We know what she does to horses. Which I'm like, maybe you could enlighten me, because I have no clue what she does to horses. I have heard nothing of this particular rumor. Let's go down to Dirum. Marketplace horses. There we go. A heavy war horse. Our horse is 4142. That horse is all up in the 40s, but he's got way better charge. Oh, he's too expensive. Horse, you are out of my price range. 
Katrin. I think she's pretty good. We may come back for her later. Just because I think she's okay with raiding. You want to create a party that's decent with raiding. Kind of an evil party, basically. Let's go over to Ookskal. See what they've got for us there. Maybe fight some bandits somewhere around here. Not seeing a whole lot of combat to be had. Armor-wise, we could get ourselves a great helmet, which would be pretty badass. Be sort of intimidating. But nothing else is really jumping out at me as like a must-have item right now. Horses? That one right there is a nice choice. Well, maybe I can't afford a nicer horse right now. Let's go and see if we can find some fights. Because I don't think I can actually afford a really nice horse at the moment. Swati has declared war against Rodox. Vagir's made peace there. Nords has declared war on Svadia. Alright, I haven't decided whose side you want me to ally with. I mean, decide if you want amongst yourselves. I will go with a vote if you want. I mean, I don't really want to hang out with, like, the Kurgeats or anything. But if you guys have a particular army, that's, in fact, in this episode, let's take a vote. And I'm not going to say that I'm going to take requests here, but if you guys particularly want to see me play a certain army, I can go ahead and try it. Let's run down these bandits here. These are forest bandits, so they've got leather armor. They don't have really great equipment, but they will kind of hector you from a range, which can be a big issue. Like, I'm willing to bet we'll probably lose a couple archers here, just because that seems to be the way that it goes. I'm going to try and get my infantry set up right here. Oh, that one's got a horse. I didn't know forest bandits could have a horse. He must be a deserter. Yeah, he's a serenade. You can tell from the way he's dressed. Let me see if I can take him out. There we go. They've unhorsed him, so he should be pretty much dead shortly. Down he goes. A desert bandit, in fact. So he was a, he was of serenade descent, as I thought. Does that recruit have a shield? I don't remember recruits having shields. It's weird. I feel like they've made modifications to the overall way the game plays out right now. We definitely don't want to allow that to happen. Let's go ahead and kill some of these guys off. Ooh, I just did something dumb. My horse almost got whittled down right there. Block that off. And then, ooh, that was friendly fire almost. Which, there's nothing really friendly about it. In fact, friendly fire is kind of a misnomer. And I think I have to give Kevlar responsibility for that joke. I think he used that one in a conversation. Kevlar Illuminati watches my videos. We talk sometimes and... Let's see... We've killed quite a few of them. Actually, we killed all of them. That's a little weak. Got some padded leather, mostly leather stuff, so we're not gonna make a whole lot of money fighting these guys, but that wasn't the goal in the first place. We're trying to level up some of these lower ranked troops. Not going to take some of that weaker stuff. Not worth my effort or my time. Now, let's take a brief moment out and figure out what it is that we want to do right now. I do have reasonably decent troops leveled up. Means I could potentially get away. Ooh, a Nord veteran. Hold on, what are you doing at the back of the list? You get up on up here. You and I, I want you right up by my side. Muscular Nordic man. Let's go fight some Tundra Bandits, I guess. We're going to go up here and see if there's Tundra Bandits around. That's an alternate quest that we could take, where there may be a Tundra Bandit hideout up in here somewhere. We will ride through the snowy north and hopefully don't lose our toes to any crazy frostbite or anything. God, frostbite is terrifying. You see frostbite pictures and you're just like, oh my god, that blows. There is no friendly part of frostbite, but then again, it is named frostbite. I mean, it's not like it's named Frost Kiss which would be a horrible misnomer. Let's take a look around. Our spot ability should be able to see it as we move through the outback here. Who are those Tundra Bandits? Yeah, let's go fight them. I am down with this situation. 21 of them could make for an interesting fight, but it's also an interesting fight to make a lot of XP on. Now, they're going to have horses, as I recall. So what we want is like everybody to be right here as they crest this hill so that the first charge hits us but if they try and wheel around they're gonna be coming back around uphill since we don't have any other hills like that one right there is gonna be out of the boundaries of the map we don't have anything else to play with so if we can't have them charging uphill at us with their initial attack we're gonna have them charge downhill on their first attack hit our wall and then they're not gonna be able to recover they're gonna hit a quagmire 
The other nice thing is that the AI likes to be sort of dumb when they use horsemen. Like, they like to charge out and just hit you with their horsemen up front, which then separates their horsemen from supporting their infantry. I'm hoping that's something that gets changed when we get to Mountain Blade 3. Oh, well, maybe they don't have horsemen. I thought Tundra Bandits had horsemen, but I could be wrong. Maybe that's... Damn it. How dare you, sir? How dare you? Now I'm relegated to the back of the fight for the remainder. So let's get off the horse and get in the shield wall because I just lost all my health in one hit. Let's have everybody charge on in now. Before we lose our shields here. Yeah, that's what I was worried about. We've already lost a footman. It's okay though, he's low tier. He's not something that you want to worry about. God, skirmishing's killing off half of these guys before we even get there. I'm gonna wheel around the outside. And down he goes. See if I can get this guy in the back. Down he goes. And we've got a runner over there. Fortunately, oh, I missed, but our other troops managed to get him. Where's my horse at? Still hanging out in the back lines. Very cool. I'm going to go grab him, and I think... Yeah, it looks like that other unit's way across the map, so we're going to have to go get him. And I think I can still get there quicker, even if I go back and I <laughs> get Scooch over here. Come on, Scooch! It's a little known fact about how Scooch got his name. It's because he does that thing that dogs do on the rug when they got poo butt. But when a horse does it, it's a bit more destructive to the carpet. Believe you me, you may have to call you may have to call a carpet specialist on that one. I heard the worst name business ever earlier. On the radio, they were advertising for this business, and it was called Pick and Pull. Like, what in the hell does a business called Pick and Pull do? Dear God, what business could you possibly be in where your name is Pick and Pull? You shot Scooch, man. That is not all right. Now, because they're both still skirmishing, I want to avoid eating a javelin to the face. So I'm going to try and get them to wear down their ammunition first. Ooh, tempted fate right there in one. I just cannot seem to get the job done, though, with a single strike. I'm going to have to figure out what's going on here. we got to do some more curls or do something. Killed 21 men. We lost three. Our veteran spearmen, footmen, few. Lost a couple good troops there. Balanced Jarids. Not a lot of valuable stuff here either, unfortunately. I would rather have the javelins versus other things. We could use a mace for knocking people out and taking captives. I haven't been using my crossbow a lot, and I do want to get power draw so I can use a normal bow. Now the difference is that normal bows don't deal nearly as much damage. Crossbows tend to one-shot and hurt a lot. Oh, we leveled up. Cool, well, level number eight, Ocho. Let's see here. I'm going to continue putting points into a strength. We've almost reached double digits. We're getting there. At this point, I think I'm going to start putting points into surgery, actually, so that we stop losing troops. Now, what surgery does is every point you put in surgery increases. It gives everybody a 4% chance that they won't die when the last HP is taken off of their meter. So if you can get that up to, like, level 5 or 6, you have a 24% chance that whoever gets knocked down will actually just be unconscious and not die, which is great when you're trying to conserve leveled up units, which are at a surplus once you get further into the game. Now, training does offset that a little bit. Once you're high level, you can train up troops very, very quickly to like tier four over a couple days, in fact. They can get very, very good very, very fast, but we don't have that benefit right now. So I'd like to get some surgery at the bare minimum to stop people from dying to dumb stuff like they did in the last fight, like random javelins from the backfield and things of that nature. I continue putting points into archery, I suppose, until we get a little bit further in. Once that gets to like 100, I'll put like 100 points into throwing. We'll play around with a lot of weapons as we play the game. We'll kind of swap things out. The unfortunate consequence of that battle is that we need to both vendor and recruit some more because our troops are down in number. We lost four guys there, and we want to make sure that we always have about 30 units to keep ourselves combat effective. That may seem like a small force, but used properly, 30 men can hold off like 100 in this game. No problem, if not more. 800 silver for that loot we just picked up, which is very, very cool. We're not low on food or anything yet. Check the horse merchant one more time, because why not? We'll also go to the tavern, grab ourselves a brewski, 
See if there's anybody here that I want to hire. A ransom broker. I don't think I have anybody to ransom. We can look. Nope. Circular dialogue. We got nothing. Mercenary crossbowman. No thanks, dude. We got Rodakian guys. Let's go ahead and head back into the Nordlands. Get ourselves some recruiting done. And then we'll go back up to the north and see if that Sea Raider lair has respawned. I think Fanata should be ready to go. Same with Furichin. And we can hit Quinn, too. Ambien, I think, was... Oh, no. Ambien's okay. It's Viachig that smoked out. To there, the higher our renown is too. You notice that we've been accumulating renown over the course of the game. If we go to our notes menu right here, we can go to actually maybe not. Maybe it's in reports. There we go. Character renown. As that grows, we can recruit more and more guys. It also additionally helps with a number of other random things that don't really become apparent until you've played the game for a little while. Helps out with recruiting, makes you get more units when you try and recruit from a place, although I think that's more affected by your reputation with a particular village. So if you look here, we have a reputation with this village. If that's like in the 50s, you'll get like 20 guys every single time you recruit from there, and it's amazing. Helps you replenish those troops very, very quickly. We'll hit Jelbeggy or Hellbeggy or however the hell you say it in Hayen. And that's put us up to 35, which I think should be perfectly fine for the time being. We haven't lost any of our crossbowmen, which are really cool. We've got warriors there. Okay, I'm happy with my line right now. Let's hit tier and make sure that there's nobody at the tavern that we'd like to use as a unit. I'm thinking that Mathild has got to be down in the Serenid lands somewhere, although I am terrified of the Serenid lands. The bandits down there run. That's I think that's Ramon, yeah. Down in the Serenid lands, the bandits are horsemen, which means they move around the map at an incredible pace, and they also just do this annoying kite stuff in combat becomes quite frustrating and I don't like fighting them. It makes me sad. It makes me want to cry giant candy coated tears. I don't think we have anything to do here right now. We could fight in the arena for a little bit if you guys wanted to see what that's like. It's mostly used for leveling up earlier on in the game. Ooh, we've upgraded people through training. Nice. That means we've reached a high enough level to where training is actually giving us a positive benefit now. If only getting people up to tier 2, but sometimes that's all it takes. There is a world of difference. I'll show you right now. Let's actually take a look. There's a world of difference between Tier 1 and Tier 2. So here's a Tier 1 recruit. He's level 6, and his stats are pretty piss poor. Now if we go back and pause that back there. If you wanted to look at what his stats are, you could pause them and compare. A Tier 2 footman, he's now level 10. His stats are way better. I mean, I think his intellect went down, so I think he got dumber from spending time on a battlefield, but what do I know? But all of his other skills have gone up, like power throw, power strike, whatnot. Don't quote me on that because I didn't actually look at those stats. But trust me, there's a big difference between characters at low level versus characters that are even at tier 2 or 3. Plus the fact that his shield is no longer a busted ass shield, he's got javelins he can throw. Sometimes all it takes is going from tier 1 to tier 2 in order to make your units much, much, much more combat effective. Now there are exceptions to that rule. Rodox being one of them, their infantry just tend to be awful all the way up to max tier. Until, actually, the top tier unit is pretty much the only one that's worth your time when it comes to Rodox for infantry, but let's see here. I think my voice is actually about to give out on me. I'm still sick, and my voice randomly goes in and out, so I think I'm going to break the episode off right now and give it a rest. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here at the Nerd Castle for another episode of Mountain Blade Warband. I'm sorry I had to break it off a little early throat's kind of hurt and it's feeling all raspy so I think I'm gonna I don't want to risk burning it out and actually making the issue worse so I'll see you guys tomorrow take care out there everybody and farewell